Reggie Miller, the Hall of Famer. Finals game five tonight, 8.30 Eastern on ABC in Denver. I'm checking the math here, Reg, and I know you said the Miami Heat in six. I don't think that they can win in six. I don't think they can win in six. I felt like something special was brewing in Miami. It just so happened that big face coffee that Jimmy Butler is so affectionately known for, right? Uh, I just think that's what the Nuggets were drinking with their chicken McNuggets. Mm. Okay. But look, just looking at this series, um, at the end of the day, Denver, they've been much more physical after that berating by their coach after game two. They're just bigger. They're stronger at every position. Even looking at uh, Christian Brown uh, off the bench, he's bigger than, you know, a lot of the starters for Miami. Cream rises, and they will, they've they always had the best player in the series on the floor at the, at, uh, in Jokic. And the two best crazy, players, though, Reg. I what would... a crazy stat you just gave because you – what series was that for Michael Jordan where he had four straight games of 10 plus? What series was that of his six finals appearances? Because you never, I never would have guessed that. Yeah, Magic. Not that he, was, not that he wasn't a willing passer, but I, I didn't think he would have had four straight games like that. Yeah, Magic did it five times. Jordan and Kuzi did it uh, once with at least four consecutive finals games with 10 or more assists. So... Uh, maybe uh, my research department can look and see what series. Oh, you've been answering any of your questions, so I don't know if he's going to do any kind of research. Oh, wow. yeah. Paul, you won't even answer your question. <laughs> yes, Paul. Yeah, I got it. It's a 1991 NBA Finals versus the Lakers. Jordan had games with uh, 12, 13, 13, and 10 assists against the Lakers. I wonder oh. if Mike was like, you know, Magic, you're known for passing the ball. I can do what you do. I, you know what? Uh, when he was taking over the reins as being the best player, that was a part of it because everyone always said with Magic and with Larry, they're winners. They do everything. They get everyone involved. And Michael, early on in his career, was just known primarily as just being a scorer. So, yeah, I think in the back of his mind, in the finals against Magic, I'm going to beat you at what everyone – perceives to be your strength, and that is distributing the basketball as well as scoring. What can the Heat do to make this competitive? They, they've got these undrafted guys who have been fantastic throughout this playoff line. The Duncan Robinsons, the Gabe Vincents, the Caleb Martins. They've got to score the basketball. That, that's, that's really it. And give Denver uh, Nuggets credit defensively. They've shut these guys down. But scoring is at a premium, and Miami plays their best when their defense is clicking, but they get timely offense. We know about Jimmy Butler and Bam, but to me, the success of Miami has been those other guys because they've been reliable throughout this playoff run, and in the finals, um, they've kind of been up and down. Duncan Robinson, um, who was good in game two, has been a no-show, so they've got to find scoring. I brought this up last week that if Joker wins a championship, and let's say he averages a triple-double, I mean, he might be putting up numbers that are the best that anybody's ever put up for, through an entire postseason. Is, is he in the conversation? He's not Bill Russell. He's not Kareem. But is he entering a conversation with David Robinson, Akeem? I wouldn't put him in there with Shaq, but... Uh, where where would he be with great centers of all time? I would say he he would be knocking on the door. I, I, I can't put him in there with Akeem yet. I can't put him in there with David Robinson because he's going to have to win another championship. The, what, the numbers he has, has put up is historic. We've never seen anything like it before. He's somewhat of a unicorn at the ability to score, to assist, to rebound. The passes have been phenomenal. But at the end of the day, it's only one championship. And I know people want to get caught up in that. Yeah. If he builds up a body of work and he comes back with another championship, then we can open the door and start having these conversations. But with one championship, 
I can't put him in there with Hakeem, who has two. David Robinson, I believe, has two or three. Um, it's very difficult for me to put him in the, that company. He, he's nowhere near Shaq, in my opinion, in terms of centers. He's nowhere near Shaq. And um, Joker is not, you know, I think he's 28. Hakeem didn't have his titles till he turned 30. Mm-hmm. And, and this is a team that is going to be together. They're young. And they just made a trade with Oklahoma City to get another draft pick, I think a second round draft pick this upcoming draft. You know, they're they're gonna want to reload or add maybe not even reload, but add to what they already have to make sure that they're still the team to beat next year. And well coached in Michael Malone. And let's remember this experience that goes a long way. And if they can find a way, which we all believe they will. Uh, to wrap it up tonight and win a championship. That experience and that chip on your shoulder, every time they take the floor a year from now, once next season kicks in, it's taking the floor of the world champions. That kind of builds on your ego and your psyche a little bit, and that builds that confidence. Um, This team, they're young, they're energetic. Again, we talked about them being well coached. They're going to be around for the long haul. But I will say this, the West is loaded too, though. Right. So they're, they're going to on a nightly basis when you have that target on your back, if they're the champs, um, they're going to have to be able to bring it each and every night. If I said you could have Luka or Jokic. I would take Jokic. OK, I don't think that would be even close, in my opinion, um, especially for my skill set. I'm going to put myself like who. Who could I benefit and play with the most? And it definitely would be Jokic. The way he passes and can score, and he's so unselfish. Not that Luka isn't. He's very unselfish as well. But, I mean, Jokic is just a different breed. He's just different. We had Malika Andrews on last hour, and she said that uh, Jokic learned how to pass by water polo. When he holds the ball up, if you watch water polo, that's what it is. Like he's They're facing a lot too. Yeah, yes, yes, and and side angles, and I mean all like Patrick Mahomes type angles with his passes. Uh, and I, I would also say that about water polo too. That builds your fitness as well. Um, if you've ever been to a water polo match, which oh, yeah. I've been to quite a few at Pepperdine, um, the fitness of those athletes is tremendous, especially from the upper body up. Uh, being able to wade in water um, and play above the water. Um, you can tell that's why he's in great physical shape as well. You didn't play water polo, did you? No, I didn't. <laughs> One of those things that, uh, no. Water and Reggie doesn't get <laughs> what, what was your second best sport? Baseball. Baseball was my first love. I was a much better baseball player early on in my career until I got to high school. And then the coach at Riverside Poly wanted me to pitch because in Little League, I was like Mariano Rivera <laughs> as a pitcher in Little League. I was an unbelievable pitcher. But once I went to Pony, and then as you know, the mound grows once you get to, to high school, it's further back. And the high school coach was like, you know, I want you to pitch. And I'm like, uh, no, I want to play center field. She's like, no, you're going to pitch. I'm like, I'm going to concentrate on basketball. Oh, he's um, Reggie Miller, the Hall of Famer, joining us. Uh, by the way, game five tonight, the Heat are nine point underdogs, and that's uh, 8 30 Eastern on ABC. Dame Lillard starts next season where? I want to say Portland, but just looking and observing all these lives that he does and conducts and, you know, you've got Portland fans now saying, hey, we can get a bag for Damien and he's coming out saying, sign a petition if you want me out of here. I, I want to say he's going to be somewhere else. And I know, I think his destinations were Miami. He said no to Boston. Um, there was one other place that he said that he would Brooklyn, go, Brooklyn, that's it. And it's interesting, you know, we mentioned Brooklyn because when we were doing the Brooklyn Philadelphia series, game two or three, I believe it was, or game four, 
he was in attendance in Brooklyn. And I was like, uh oh, let all the conversation start. Because I think he would be great on that team with Cam Johnson, Mikael Bridges, Spencer Dinwiddie. I think they need a closer. We talked about that. They need a number one on that team. Yeah. He would be a bona fide number one for uh, the Brooklyn Nets. I, I just don't, they can get a lot for him. Um, and Portland, they're not going anywhere. I'm sorry. They're just not. Kyrie Irving, uh, start of next season will be where? The Dallas Mavericks. Okay. They can offer him the most. Um, I say he stays with Dallas. Chris, they gave up so much, they gave up so much to get him. They can't allow him to they basically gave away all the defensive players to attain him. So I, I think uh, they've got to open up the bag and, and sign Kyrie. Chris Paul is where opening night. I would love to see him with the Los Angeles Lakers. He's a free agent, unrestricted free agent. I know his family, uh, they still live in the Calabasas area. I think he would be a great fit for them. They had point guard woes down the stretch, as we saw with D'Angelo Russell. Um, I would love to see Chris Paul in a Laker uniform playing alongside his good friend, LeBron James. But what are you getting with a 38-year-old Chris Paul? You just want someone to stabilize and not beat you. Make a timely, wide-open shot. Don't turn the ball over and be steady. The key for Chris is he's going to have to stay healthy and stay healthy when it matters. Yeah. It's like he has always banged up come April 15th once playoffs start. Yeah, I just – man, that's a weird situation. If you're LeBron and you're Chris Paul and you go, hey, hey, what are you thinking? You just need a floor general, though, because LeBron's not Well, what if LeBron doesn't want Chris Paul? How awkward is that? Where is that where you go, man, Polinka, he won't pull the trigger on this, man? Uh, if you can get him for a bargain basement price, which you can, um, I don't think you're going to get him for, like, what is he owe? $37 million? I think uh, I think 30 I think you can, because most of that, the Suns are going to be on the hook for. So if you can get them at a bargain basic price. Yeah. I... But haven't we tried this with the three, stu- you know, three stars there in LA? So. Yeah, but he wouldn't be one of those guys that was counting on to win games. He'll be counting on not to lose games for you, I think. And unless, at the end of the day, when healthy, he is an unbelievable floor general. He understands how to run a team. He is not going to hurt you. Didn't Steve Kerr, was there something about maybe Golden State would be interested in Chris Paul? Am I, am I just making that up? Or I thought there was something that was there. I haven't heard that, but I could see that. Him playing alongside the Splash Brothers and Draymond Green, if healthy, I would like to see that. That would, kind of, that would be fascinating to watch as well. Uh, Miami Heat have no chance or low chance? Uh, low chance. I'll, I'll never say no chance. Yeah. Just uh, Jimmy Butler can go crazy, um, but it would be beneficial for Denver. You don't want to get on a plane, go back to, to Miami for game six. Handle your business because if those shooters get going, Miami's been the underdog these whole – Postseasons, they barely made it with that win over Chicago. Uh, they just smacked Miami or Milwaukee, the number one team in the East. Um, their most competitive series up to date before Denver, what to me was that uh, Knicks series. I thought the Knicks played them yeah. pretty well. Yeah. Um, and then we saw that seven game epic series with Boston winning on the road. So they've been there before, but. I just think they're facing a much bigger, more physical at every position. They are, Aaron Gordon played like he did in game one, uh, in, in game four. He just used the size. He, he overpowered. And on any given night, one of those guys can take over, led by their two stars in Jokic and Murray. 
Uh, we had a poll question. Would you rather be Djokovic or Drew Brees? So, greatest tennis player or most decorated tennis player, or would you rather be Drew Brees with a Super Bowl win and, you know, a top 10 quarterback of all time? Um, wow. Are you taking away football, which is the number one sport in the world with ratings and, and all that, or the greatest, arguably the greatest tennis player? Yeah. I like... I like Novak. I, I would take the arguably one of the greatest tennis players of all time. Okay, what I, about your career? If I said you could have your career or Novak Djokovic? I'm always going to take my career. Over love, over yeah. everybody? I love my career. If I, I love, said your career or Tom Brady's? Well, I would take Tom Brady's. <laughs> you just, you just told me you're always taking you. Look. I'm happy with my career, my success, ups and downs. It's it's the building blocks. That's what <laughs> it's about. It's the building blocks. What about Ray Allen's career or Djokovic's career? Ray had a really good career. Greatest shooter besides Steph Curry. <laughs> <laughs> Is Ray a better shooter than you? I want to stop it. Here you go again, trying to start animosity amongst my children. Stop it. These are all my children. I've spawned them all. Okay. I spawned them all. But Steph is a better shooter than you. I've spawned them all. <laughs> I'm sitting from the mountaintop. Look at my children. Okay, so Ray oh, Allen yeah. or, oh, or yes, Ray all Allen or Djokovic. Shooters. Uh, how about Peja Stoyakovic? No, no, no. <laughs> Let's just throw some itches out there. How about Robert? I, I would go with I would go with Ray's career over Novak. Okay, Robert Ori's career or Novak Ooh. Djokovic? Oh, uh, Novak. Okay, Novak. And Ray is it's Steph then Ray. Look at this dude. <laughs> First of all, there's Larry Bird. He's the God. I'm Jesus. And then the rest are my angels. The rest are our angels. So it goes Larry Legend as God. Jesus, <laughs> yours truly. And then our angels are below us. Oh, so, so Larry <laughs> spawned you. Yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. Well, Reggie's got the heat in six. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was this close. You were. Yeah. You were that close. close. You're... After game two. I know. I know. Hey, if they Everything come back, now. if they come back, you're, you're going to look good. Remember, okay. low chance, not no chance. Thank you, Reg. I appreciate you, Theodore. Reggie Aloysius Miller, Jr., the third. Game five tonight at 8.30 Eastern on ABC.